Hey, good morning and welcome to another edition of the Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Eric Cedars, drum hamburger helper, sitting in here on a beautiful, beautiful day in the Valley of the Sun. And we're live from the Deer Valley Hole in the Ceiling Studios on this seventh day of April 2020 in the year of our Lord. I'd like to wish my younger brother Craig a happy birthday today. Happy birthday, Mo. Uncle Mo. Mo Roy's 59 years old. Not quite to the big 6-0, but oh, he's... Oh, boy. A, he's closing in on another one of those big milestones. I still want to apologize if you're listening or podcasting, which I think he does, that, uh, for shooting you in the butt with a BB gun on your 12th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm real sorry about that. I can still picture him running across the yard going, Ah! <laughs> I've matured. I, I, I'm older now. <laughs> I'm sorry. This show is brought to you by the Patriot Trading Group, legal, lawful, constitutional tender. Things that you can hang on to. Call one 800 951 and get you some. You can also head out. You know, I find interesting the younger generation is calling, and they're wanting to know why something seems to be amiss in this country. Their parents, who they've been living with for a long time, are now living with them again. You know, they're all home. Everybody's home, and they're like, i got to get out of here. Maybe the only way out is to buy some gold and silver. But what's interesting is, you know, you can order at allamericangold.com, but like their parents, they need to call first. You know, I, I they call and talk to them. Now, the parents will just say, okay, well, I want to order. I mean, after me doing this for, you know, 25 years and Joe doing it. So they call, and, and, and parents will order. The younger generation wants to hang up the phone. And click the Buy It Now button online. They don't want to place the order on the phone. So I have, if you call 1-800-951-0592, I have installed a telephone Buy It Now button, okay? And you and I will click it together when you call. So how's that? How about that? So we, we cater to everybody. So very easy to get along with. There is no such thing as a dumb question unless, well, it's a dumb question. <laughs> That's the only thing. <laughs> Other than that. We're okay. All is not lost in Arizona. The Major League Baseball says, yeah, we're going to come. They've got, what are they, got? 20, insta- 20 stadiums here. You know. And- well, yeah, we have obviously the spring training facilities uh, along with where the Diamondbacks play as well. So we have uh, a number of parks, and there is, it, it's, I guess, being talked about. I don't know how seriously it was being discussed that Major League Baseball was going to bring all the teams to Arizona. And essentially what they were thinking about doing was like, okay, the Diamondbacks, you guys get this hotel. Uh, The Dodgers, you guys stay here. The Rockies, you guys stay here. you got to remember, nobody's in these places. They're all empty. Everything's empty. Right, so so. each of the teams, you get your own hotel. And it's kind of like, okay, you don't get to leave the hotel. Right. Except for get on the bus and go to one of the facilities to play a game without any fans. There'd be no fans. It's just like being a mud hen, okay, but with nicer hotels. (laughs) (laughs) Nobody's coming out to watch you anyway. Right. But come on. All right, the Cubs are playing the Dodgers, and there's nobody in the stadium, okay? This is their master plan. You know why? Because they had to give them an advance. Player Baseball Union – had to give these guys a little advance on their no, no, zillions no, of dollars. No season means no pay, right? For the players, so their union, yes. their union, the, the 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 players are seemingly surprised. They're all for it. The players are like, "Yeah, I want to get paid." Major League Baseball is all for it. Everybody's all for it. Guess who's not all for it? Hmm. Who could it be? Dude. Is it the governor? Dude. Nope. Um, maybe is it the White House? Nope. No. It's the most liberal medical institution in the world that has already shut down all the universities. They've shut down all college football. Now they're saying spring of 2021. Yes, Johnny Hopkins strikes again. John Hopkins University. Oh, no, we can't have this. And blah, blah. Hey, I mean, I agree. It won't work. Okay. No. You know how many people would be, they'd be like a bee's nest hovering around. The, this is baseball. This is America. And imagine if they if they let one person in. They could do six foot distancing, you know, and they only sell tickets six feet apart. But eventually, they'll all go to the bathroom together. Right. That's. <laughs> <laughs> but I gotta go now, Dad. <laughs> you gotta wait for section C seven to go first. So, so I mean, it's uh, 
May you live in interesting times. So Johnny Hopkins, again, Joe smoked pot with him when he was younger. They uh, they have uh, put the kibosh on that. So anyway, and they also said don't pay any attention. Now, these are the guys that, that put the numbers up, you know, and there's so much, so, there's so many different schools of thought going around. Joe looks at me and goes, what are you going to talk about? I mean, I've been talking out loud all morning about the uh, – the numbers, John Hopkins, who publishes the numbers. very upset with Johnny Hopkins. That's all I, I really am. know. So they said, well, even though the numbers, Johnny Hopkins are shut, they're the guys who shut everything down. You know, people don't, don't, Marty Mackery, go I, look I, him up. I'm looking at this thing, and I, I don't, I just don't see it. I don't know how we even get to 50,000 people. I don't know. Yeah, they say 500,000 are going to get it. This is Marty Mackery. He said it the other day. 500,000 Americans are going to get it. Anyway, Wall Street is doing the Macarena. Everybody's waiting for their stimuli check, for lack of better words, to magically appear into their bank accounts. And, well, let me tell you what's happened with them being able to stabilize the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is the ferrometer. You know, we had an old Labrador, old Bronco, yellow lab, and he would, when people came to the house, he got about two inches away from their genitals and growled <laughs> very low. It, and it, it, he went, and you could barely hear it. It was very disconcerting for people. But Bronco liked to take his ferrometer out, you know, and we and we see how he do it. Wall Street, same thing. Wall Street now has settled down a little bit, and the banks, the banks are starting to ask questions about handing out Mula. Mula Mula University. You're listening to the Patriot Radio News Hour. The blind leads the stupid. Monday through Friday right here. Stay with us. Welcome back. Patriot Radio News Hour. Beautiful day in the Valley of the Sun. I hope this finds you well wherever you are in this world gone mad. Of course, we're glad we have a captive audience. So I got Joe here. I want to let everyone know we're doing a special show today. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We're doing two hours. say that. A special two-hour edition of the Patriot Trading Group, uh, the Patriot Radio News Hour. For those of you uh, that are listening here on 1010 at KXXT here in Phoenix, uh, you could jump on to 1360KHNC.com uh, on your cell phone, your laptop, wherever you are, and tune in for hour number two over there at uh, the Mothership 1360. Businesses are doing all they can to survive, you know, with Wall Street crashing and you and the bank stocks literally just getting ready to go to zero. They were willing to hand out money for any reason to anybody. And now that they've got a little bit of computerized trading going and they're uh, the, pl- the economic stabilization fund, the plunge protection team, doing all they can to hold this together. No stimulus money has gotten out. Now the banks are changing the rules a little bit. So... Joe's kind of looked at all this. Now, where are we at? You got a, there's a, actually a seven steps. So, you- so uh, I applied, and I've got my, I got an email back yesterday saying that I had, uh, I'm on step one. I have done step number one, which was fill out this form. Now, the form itself, very simple. Okay, and 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 really, I shouldn't even say very simple. It was you had to be able to do a little bit of math, and and like the government wasn't great, but simple enough. You filled it out. We did it mostly because we want to know what everybody else is going to go through. I mean, how we can't get out the news to you unless we know. So, right. so we just wanted to see what would happen. So know? I got an emailed response. It wasn't. And here's the funny thing. It wasn't like immediately. So I I, I did it yesterday morning before the show started. Uh, I had done the one on the SBA site last week. They've outlined the steps that are going to be needed to get this money. And I'm only on step one. And the, by, the, by the time you get to, well, you got to go seven, there's seven steps. There's six more steps I got to go through. Isn't that something? To get this money. And I'm looking at it, and, they're, they, and, and here's what the best part was. At the end of it, so here's the steps. They say throughout, and and every step ends with, and we may require other documentation. And we may require other documentation. And we may require, and then at the end, it says that, hey, we still don't really know exactly what it is that we need you to do yet. Right. Yeah, they're just not going to hand the money out. Now, that was what they said 10 days ago. 
Just fill out this short little form, put your name, breathe on the screen, you're in. You're going to have a deposit in three days. This is what the SBA said. 72 hours, you're going to have a check. We need your ABA number and your bank account and your EIN. And if you don't have an EIN, give us your Social Security number. Within 72 hours, you get ten grand. no questions asked. Now, they're able to stabilize the markets a little bit. Then they're like, well, wait a minute. Maybe we're not going to hand this out. If this money doesn't go out, I assure you, you are going to go through the Great Depression. It will make the Great Depression look like tinker toys, like nothing. If they don't get this money out on the street, and I'm telling you, it better be an Easter event. They're running out of time that fast. Did you see the food lines to get, I mean, yeah, look on Drudge Report in Florida. The traffic's backed up for 10 miles trying to get into food banks. They got traffic jams around the one in Phoenix. People are just flat running out of money. They run out of money. Do you know what happens to the inner cities? Do you have any idea where they're heading next when their grocery stores have no food? Snap out of it. What the heck is wrong? Get the money out. I'm it isn't you, real anyway. Just weeks. send it out. It's going to be weeks before <laughs> anybody sees anything. And you got to remember, these businesses have already been closed for weeks. Right. Now, the, uh, Doug Doozy in the Arizona Republic today uh, says, you don't. if you're a small business, you don't have to pay your rent. Commercial landlords must stop evicting small businesses that can't pay rent during the coronavirus pandemic. What the order says, commercial landlords can't lock out tenants issue them orders to vacate or otherwise interfere with their business unless a court orders that to to the contrary. Ducey's order does not say these debts should be forgiven. He doesn't say how they're going to be paid, but he says now until the end of next month, you can't just don't Can't get it. They don't get out. it. That doesn't work. All that's I know. doing is, is what does that do for a shopping nothing. center? Owner? Nothing. What does that do for a restaurant or a bar that's already closed? Nothing. I know. It's crazy. Well, how about this? You know, you kids at home listening, playing along when the country's moving right to left on your screen. I bet you have your eye on that seventy-inch flat-screen TV at Walmart. You're counting down the days for your coronavirus stimulus check to buy it. Well, my friend, don't get your hopes up just yet, getting that 1200 bucks that's been promised to you. Here's 10 reasons why. Number one, college students and their parents who still claim you as a dependent won't receive a stimulus check. You don't get it. If you live at home, your parents do. How about that? I'm all for that. Oh, yeah. You're only worth 500 bucks to well, them. Yeah, so. I mean, you know. Disabled people, this is something. Disabled people won't receive coronavirus if you are disabled and your parents still support you. Okay, well, same thing. You're just disabled. Three, no corona stimulus check for seniors living with their kids. Really? Isn't that interesting? That doesn't make much sense, does it? So you're just out. You're just out because you don't get $500. Your parents can't claim you reverse, right? (laughs) These are my kids now. I'm claiming my grandma. So... No coronavirus check for babies born in 2020. So if you got a new one, you don't get the $500. Well, does that not count. I don't know. The $500 per payment is based on oh, the latest 2019 taxes. So if you have a baby born this and year, again, what does 2019 have, have to do? I know. 2020, nothing. No coronavirus stimulus checks for high earners who lost their jobs. And again, if you're a realtor. You know, or something you claimed, you know, the times were pretty good a couple of years ago, you know, and you made over 75000 then they start prorating well, it. And, and you know what else is funny? How many people got their 29 taxes done? Nobody. And now they even extended right, them. Right, they extended so, them. Who right. got their 2019 taxes done? Nobody. So this year you have no income, but you don't get a stimulus because you made money last year? Or two years ago? Or two years ago. How about this one also? This is a biggie. No coronavirus stimulus check for patients who split or parents who split custody. So parents who aren't married and split custody of their children may not be eligible for the check. If parents take turns claiming, uh, take turns each year, they go back and forth, you know, and divorces. So I get to write off the, the your child this year and then the other parent does. That's normal in, uh, in uh, divorce proceedings. So apparently you don't get that. And also, if you're recently divorced or estranged, not everyone who filed taxes jointly with a spouse in 2019 is still married to that spouse or even on speaking terms. A couple who filed their taxes jointly last year get a combined payment of 2400 The funds will be deposited in whoever's bank account was used. <laughs> so now the other spouse has got, hey, where's my 1200 bucks? 
Oh, no coronavirus stimulus check for anyone who owns back child support. That's going to be rough for a lot of guys, man. Your coronavirus stimulus check could be used to pay debts if you have a garnishment. Oh, so they won't give you the money? They won't give you the money? So, Oh, how many people is that? Oh, man. So, well, apparently the banks are going to end up with all this eventually, aren't they? Um, how about this? Your coronavirus stimulus check could be used to pay late student loan debts. Isn't that something? Now the government's paying itself. So there's wow. your ten reasons why a check may not be showing up in the mail. Where's my days. check? Well, uh, let's see here. Uh, you got student debt. You're divorced. Uh, what, what else is in there? Listen, I think I just ta- I think we just eliminated like thirty percent of the country's not getting a check. So I don't know. So as we continue to commit economic suicide, which is what this country's doing. You know, the president wants to get it open. Everybody wants to get it open. They want to get at least sports up and going, you know, something. So, I don't know. But, you know, the businesses are running, you know, here. Just here we got uh, Copper State Motors. And, I, you know, bring it, yesterday I talked about CNR Tire Holmstrom's. If you need tires, you know, support these local businesses. They're keeping, you know, they're keeping their – they've got a half a dozen uh, locations, CNR Tires. But they're keeping their employees on, and they're a locally owned business, not a publicly traded – uh, Copper State Motors down here at the end, uh, Ed Brace and his brother Cliff. They're amazing what they're doing. I saw they're, they're disinfecting the cars, and they go through the whole thing, and then they park them. They put them in the warehouse, and nobody gets near them. You're not allowed to. Their customers, anyone who's interested in the car can't look at it. Nobody goes in there. Nobody can touch it. If you show up, they give you gloves, and they remove the car from the warehouse. They pull it out front. If you touch it, you can only touch it with the gloves. You have to, you know, obviously come to terms before you can drive it. When you drive it, you know, the, you like it and you buy it. You're the only one in it. Otherwise, they have to re-disinfect it again. And only one person can come in and do the paperwork. It's interesting how businesses are adapting, and it's pretty good. Now, Cliff, where everybody in the complex hates him because he flew to California, and he had to go for a family issue. He flew to California. And everyone's like, oh, God, you believe we know everyone, they got on a plane. Now, I've seen pictures. If you go down to Sky Harbor Airport here in Phoenix, there's nobody there. Matter of fact, there's more people disinfecting the place, spraying whatever that vaporizer is, you know, with hydrogen so peroxide. We, we actually know a guy that went to the airport, got on a got plane. Got on a plane, yeah. And I talked to him last night. So. Ghost town city. Unbelievable. He says, I literally did not touch anything. Now, he's in a full jumpsuit, you know, like a windbreaker over the head. Everything is covered. He has big black sunglasses on and a N95 net mask with a breather. I've seen the picture. He looks exactly like the police composite of who just robbed the Circle K. I was going to okay, say, they're looking the Unabomber for this. and Cliff. Exactly. Right. This is the picture, the exact picture. He walks up to security. Now, he hasn't touched anything. The door's open automatic. He's got his carry-on suitcase. He goes through security. They don't do anything. They don't, they, don't even take off. they don't even know who it is. It could be anybody. There's one guy there, literally not anybody in the airport. You get to the gate. He flew to California. I think there were three people. Count them. One, two, three. He said he didn't touch anything. He just sat in the middle seat. He put this carry-on luggage down in front of him. He watched a Netflix movie. He's got gloves on, everything. The plane lands. He doesn't touch anything. The stewardess won't give you anything. Nobody does anything. Out the door he goes. Doesn't touch anything. Goes down the jetway through the airport. Doors open automatically. He's out. Takes his glasses, his mask, his jumper, his gloves, and puts them all in a plastic bag and seals them. And I'm thinking that, you know what? This could be the time to fly. <laughs> Three people were on the plane. Way back, four. And he says, at the California airport, he goes, it's like 50 yards between each gate. There were four flights going out, one to L.A., because he went to Northern California, one to Seattle. Phoenix had the most. On the way back, he had four. Uh, Seattle had two. These are 737s. There's nobody there. And I've seen the pictures myself. So he asked, Cliff said he asked the, uh, the gal working the gate, you know, the the steward eye, for lack of better words, and said, uh, you know, how long do you think this can go on? And she's like, 
probably not much more. It can't be running 737s, you know, with three people in them. But on the other hand, you know, people still, those three people had to get where they were going. So. Listen, I, I don't know what Wall Street's doing. I know they had the big jump yesterday, uh, gold, gold uh, bumping up here on $1,700 to the ounce. And, and I'm just reading headlines. And, and we'll, when we get back, we'll talk about mortgage requests for forbearances. And it, the numbers are just off the charts. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, a daily broadcast from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, a national volunteer organization founded by Phyllis Schlafly and continuing to uphold her legacy by opposing radical feminism and representing a traditional conservative perspective in our nation's capital. Now the president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. On the surface, it might seem unbelievable that the Brett Kavanaugh hearings generated far more public interest and protests than the impeachment of President Trump did. After all, impeachment has happened far fewer times than Supreme Court confirmations. But there are a few important reasons why things played out the way they did. First of all, remember that it was the media that drove President Nixon from office when he faced impeachment. Democrats were hoping for a repeat this time, but the liberal media's influence is gone now, thanks to President Trump. The media didn't get the chance to sensationalize impeachment with confrontations between protesters and senators in elevators. Protesters just weren't motivated enough to leave their mother's basements to go out and wreak havoc. The role of judicial supremacy might have been another reason why Brett Kavanaugh got more protesters than impeachment. Is the confirmation of one new justice to the nine-member Supreme Court really more important than an impeachment of the president? Many of the protesters apparently think so. And it's not unreasonable to assume this could be tied to the Supreme Court's tendency to overextend their power on issues like abortion, border security, LGBTQ, and the Second Amendment. The lack of interest in the impeachment may also be pinned on its futility. Without bipartisan support, there could never be the 67 votes required in the Senate to remove a president from office. There's no way anyone actually thought the Democrats could get the votes, even if every protester in the nation showed up. The whole thing was over before it began. Most working Americans have no interest in a parade of legal eggheads pontificating about whether an action by a president is, quote, an impeachable offense. If anything, the tiresome rants against President Trump demonstrated how broken Washington, D.C. is. It is clearer than ever that we need another election sweep by President Trump so he can complete the job he was sent there to do. President Trump has kept so many of his promises, but there are still promises left for him to keep. We need to fight on. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. Whether it's the vision of our founding fathers, the courage of our veterans, the moral compass of Christopher Columbus, or the fortitude of presidents like Lincoln and Reagan, the truth of history should not be undercut by liberal ideology. At Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, we honor history even as we look to the future. Join us at phyllisschlafly.com. That's phyllisschlafly.com. school where you didn't need nothing if you couldn't make it with your own two hands. He was backwards, backwards, Jews hey, were Radio like News no, Hour sir. continuing yes, chronicling man, the death of the United States economy. The unemployment numbers, I can't imagine what they're going to look like the next time, but the ones we had last time have never been so high. This economy, we're undergoing, make no mistake about it, the largest shock ever. It's, it's incomparable. And we're chasing a phantom. If you lived in California in the summer of 85 and you remember the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez, where one guy, one guy literally shut down an entire state. Gun sales skyrocketed. Locks and safes and, I mean, anything that you could think of. Anything that uh, for safety. And one guy did it. You've got the same reaction today. The coronavirus is the Night Stalker. And... Uh, I mean, this is more devastating than any war or any reason. So the war metaphor is, you know, entirely inadequate. I mean, we've literally never experienced anything like this before. Roseanne Barr says that it, you know, she's, you know, we need to get her a show on 1360. She's saying, you know, that this is designed to kill our generation. You know, you know, if it's a bio attack and this is who they're going after, you know, she says, you know, the boomers have all the money. And the, 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 the 
Y's, you know, the Gen Y's, the X's, the Z's, all they, they don't have any, and they can't get jobs, and they can't prosper, and they don't want to work, they want everything handed to them, and the problem is if you kill all the boomers, they'll hand it all down to them. I mean, th- they'll get it all, and it'll fix the problem. So. Yeah, but think about what's been done already, and I know you got a little, uh, this little bounce back here, but the boomers just got a big hit to their IRAs and their 401ks here. Uh, you think about uh, all the people you just talked about. People can't work. People don't have jobs. We don't even know. Is it 25 million, 30 million people unemployed? I mean, it, it's mind blowing. Something we haven't seen ever. Then you think about mortgage forbearance request. Now, the, these are still March numbers. And you got to remember the lockdown. When did the, the lockdowns really start? About the middle of March? You know, maybe the, maybe New York and Seattle was the beginning of March. But for the rest of the country, it was more like the middle of March. Request for mortgage forbearance is up 2,000%. Uh, just in the last two weeks alone, the week before that, I think it was like 1,200%. I mean, it's incredible. How's all this going to get done? Well, it isn't, and it's not enough. I mean, the economy's dying, and the stimulus is way inadequate. No, we're close. This it should have been out last week. When they signed it, there just should have been, all right, just give everybody a freaking check. Just give it all. We'll sort it out in their tax returns. Trust me, we're the government, the IRS. We'll figure out who got it. It should have just been automatic. Bam. One flat fee, everybody. It would have done amazing things. But now, you know, you know what? One of the problems is nobody's talking about it, and I think this will be the only place you'll hear this. It, it dawned to me in my sick, twisted right-wing thinking is fractional banking. So they talk about the economy and fractional banking. You know, you take a guy who owes, you know, who makes, I don't know, 58000 a year in today's society. He owes $300,000 on his house. He owes forty grand on his pickup. He's got 15000 on credit cards. But all this was created out of thin air. He only makes, you know, fifty grand a year. So the, he, he, and he can't pay that off. It's the fractional banking. And the banks are allowed to do that. For every dollar that you put in their deposit, it used to be, they can loan it out, I think, 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times. Who knows what it is? But the money physically hasn't been created. This is why these stimulus checks, you look at a $2 trillion economy, well, the, people already owe a trillion just on just on uh, student loans. There's uh, one another. 1.6. 1. 1. 1.6. 1. <laughs> another God knows how many trillions on credit cards and mortgages. Okay, this is why you just can't hand out a trillion. Because the debt is hundreds of trillions. So let me let me break it down for you. Now forget about commercial, forget about business, personal, uh, mortgages, about eleven trillion. Okay, credit cards, there's another trillion. Automobiles, there's another one point three or one point four trillion. Student loans, there's another one point six trillion. So yeah, two trillion's not gonna get it done. It doesn't do it anything. So the media's touting the twelve hundred dollar check to every American's gonna save us all. It's like seven days of spending for the average family. That's how much it costs. But, of course, the government's the one who puts out the inflation data. The government still thinks minimum wage is seven fifty an hour. The feds. That's their official number. Nobody works for that. They can't hire anybody. They'll stay home and live with their parents. They got to do something. They better do it fast. Wall Street's giving the illusion of prosperity. Wall Street's planning on everybody getting a check. Well, they're planning on everybody on Wall Street getting a check. There's going to be a cry out of this land here by about the third week of this month. Like, you can't believe. People will rise up. They're going to rise up and get out. It could be absolute insanity. The Easter riots, potentially? After. After. After? People have settled in. They've settled in. Everybody wanted to get out of jail on Easter, and they were willing to make that sacrifice. And... The CDC and Johns Hopkins University have talked the president into extending it. So two more weeks, but that's it. By the third week, if the stimulus checks aren't there, the people don't have any money. The credit cards are tapped out. The banks, try calling your bank and extending your credit card line. Let me know how that works out for you. And by the way, if you've done anything on on an SBA loan or if you've gotten anything, like they're saying, oh, we're handing it out, we got to refile, let us know. Email us at uh, contact at 1360khnc.com. If you don't want your name put out, let us know. Don't read the name, but anyone who's got any experience with that as well, we'd like to know. Also, if you'd like to be, we used to do this, Joe. I don't know if we can do the same more. Can we do 
um, so people can do business with like-minded uh, individuals in, 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 in wherever they live. If you have a business and you've done business with this company, uh, where can they email us, Joe? We'll put them on. If you want to get the Friends of Patriot going again so people can support like-minded uh, individuals and not corporations. So we used to do that. Well, we'll work on that. I hate to put you on the spot. No, there, we so. can absolutely do it. I, I, we can either – they can email uh, anywhere. Go to You go to Patriot and email us. Uh, you know, uh, just hit contact. So go to allamericangold.com. Hit contact. If you put your business up there, if your local business, whether Colorado, Arizona, anywhere in the country, you have customers, and we, we want to put a list up, Friends of Patriot. We used to do it. And put your business connections, and we'll see if we can get Joe's web guy to put it up, and then your business will be on our website, and uh, you know, hopefully we can keep everybody all working together because this isn't going to end. I mean, I mean, what do people do there if they just start wandering around with no credit cards and no cash and I mean, it's already started. You're seeing it. So, and then of course, if you're if you've never filed taxes, you get nothing, which makes up probably 35 percent of this entire city. You people listening in Phoenix don't understand. Well, anyone who drives around, if you go west of I-17, start heading south, go out to Buckeye, start looking around. Very few people speak English. So, what's going to happen there? I don't know. I don't know what what relief comes there. No, so, I think they go back home. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. This may explain why ammo and gun sales are so high. So all this is coming towards the end of this month. And let's hope the government's smart enough to figure it out. I thought at least they could set up armored cars and guys with AK-47s and everybody who drives by with a driver's license or an ID could get $1,000 or something. You know, I mean, just get a cash van out there and get it down in this inner city. So... I don't know, sick right-wing thinking is now gone liberal. I'm so far right, I'm coming around the left. Patriot Radio News Hour rocking and firing on the 7th day of April, Craig Cedarstrom's birthday. We'll be back after these messages. Stay with us. Patriot Radio News Hour, thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate it wherever you're listening, and thank you for allowing us into your lives and your podcasts, your cars, and your cell phones, and for sharing this show, and, I mean, we really appreciate it. Our cup runneth over here. Uh, locally, you know, do business with people that you can, especially my son-in-law who takes care of my wife and my two granddaughters. If you're in the North Valley and your weeds are running amok, call Pinkerton Landscaping at 480-201-2011. Cody Pinkerton, my son-in-law, he's a, the guy's an animal. He just comes in and he just gets it done. Talking about uh, Cliff flying to California from their their website is PHX, short for Phoenix, PHXcars.com. If you need a car, these guys go through them really good, and they're, they're, they're really making a, a huge effort to stay coronavirus friendly. So, you know, you're not going to get infected, and they'll work hard for you. But Cliff sent me pictures how he traveled to be a Joe, and he is the Unabomber. He's the right? Unabomber. And the pictures on the plane, there's nobody well, there. Yeah, I, I will say this. In the airports? Shocking. Shocking pictures. Shocking. I don't know if we can... There's nobody there. I mean, so you know the airport, these terminals, they're, they're huge, right? They're football fields long. And he takes this picture that, you know, I, I, at least like a football field where there's nobody there. I assure you, you're much safer flying today than going into Walmart oh, well, or Home no. Depot. Much safer. So... Nobody's mad at Cliff anymore who's seen the picture, so I let him off the hook. How about this? Today, on this day in 1954, President Dwight D. Eisenhower held a news conference in which he spoke of the importance of containing the spread of... When was this? 1954. Measles? Measles, I know. You'd think about I, it. I don't know. I'm, you think he had to lock down the whole world, wanted to lock down the country? No. He says we need to work on hunkering down to stop the spread of communism. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on. I thought I'd throw that in there. So you think everyone would have to stay home? Stop being commie bastards. Quit going out there and buying foreign things. So... You know, and all this was going to work. Remember, Nixon said this would all work if everybody just bought American. So don't you wish people would buy American? And I think they're going to try to do that. So anyway, you're listening to Patriot Radio News Hour, brought to you by the Patriot Trading Group and allamericangold.com. I'm Eric Cedars from Joe Jaquin, president here. This is his show, and he does a great job. And uh, Wendy's out front 
when he's been with the company a quarter century. I mean, it's amazing. So we're all still here plugging away. The Dow Gold was up sixty. Two dollars yesterday. Big update yesterday. Matter of fact, hit an intraday high last night of seventeen forty two. Woo! Yeah, seventeen forty two. Where right are we now, at right now? You're right now gold's at uh sixteen ninety two. Sixteen ninety two. I, I apologize again. Uh Kitko's got this price that the only thing, I'm trying to figure it out, you know, because we got about a $45 difference in price. Kitco and, shorts gold, that's but, why. Well, and I think, <laughs> well, let me say this. Is this an issue with the gold ETF? Is this the, well, I think it is, yeah, because they can't deliver Remember, it. Remember, so. Jeff Gunlatch warned last week that there's something wrong in these gold ETFs. And I don't know, I don't want to, you know, create speculation but i'm just because we've never seen this listen you've been doing this forever and, and have you ever seen this before i mean the april contract we we've got a direct feed to wall street we see the contracts we're in april why is it not reflecting the april price i have no idea i don't know they're still showing last month's price so either kitco's uh shut down completely they're canadian who the heck knows so they're all up there drinking Moosehead beers. I don't know. I really couldn't tell you. So, you know what's interesting? Something I never thought. This was a Newsmax story that broke this morning. Where's the Surgeon General in all this? You know, the Sturgeon Genital? Where is this guy? So, Jerome Adams, he said Tuesday he did not see the White, the White House trade advisor, Pito Navarro's January memo warning the United States and the administration of dangers to the United States of the impending coronavirus epidemic. What? The Surgeon General didn't see the memo? Well, all the senators saw it. They all sold their stock instantly, which, you know, that's being investigated. All the insiders liquidated everything. So, I mean, he's just doing a Schultz. I know nothing. <laughs> but, yeah, you wouldn't, think, you wouldn't think it wouldn't be Fauci, you know, Fauci. They brought him back from the age. You know, Savage is on 1360KHNC.com. You don't like him. And uh, Steve Starr is one of our broadcasters. We don't like him. But this goes all the way back to the AIDS epidemic. Um, see the movie uh, Dallas Buyers Club, um, which covers that. The, uh, the, uh, the, the, I forget. They were trying to give him the drug. I forget the name the of it. It was the AIDS thing, right? The AIDS thing. Yeah. They were giving him. Fauci was in on that drug that was killing everybody. So, so I don't know. Um, it's just crazy. So the Surgeon General, general, he does a Schultz. I know nothing. I didn't get the memo. I mean, wouldn't you think that'd be the guy they'd parade on TV? It is interesting. You think? I, I don't know why. I mean, the Surgeon General, he's on the side of all the cigarette packs, or he used to be. I don't know. I haven't had a cigarette in 11 years. But, uh, but anyway, in a memo dated January 29th, Navarro warned the coronavirus outbreak will wind up costing the United States trillions of dollars while putting millions of Americans at risk, basically decimating the entire U.S. economy. And uh, the Surgeon General goes, huh, I didn't get it. <laughs> Is that an Obama appointee? I don't know. So so anyway, the only thing that we're left to that is hope. Oh, that word, there it is again, the Obama hope. The money gets out that everybody gets a... Uh, their pile of FRNs that they can get out and, and send, but nobody knows what's really going to happen. They're saying the uh, that the curve is flattening. Wow. That's the news. So I gotta, I gotta uh, just what are you reading? Just Joe? break in here, uh, Michael Burry. If you guys don't know him, he was the guy that they made the Big Short about. Okay, the movie The Big Short. The Big Short. Right. The okay. more he was the guy. Oh calling, yeah, we saw that movie. Right, yeah. screaming fire about what was the the, the housing collapse. Right, right? all of these mortgages—they're all BS. They're 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 all slapped. You know, uh, AAA rated. They're backed by nothing. It's all going to collapse. Uh, he he's been uh, out on Twitter, and he's been out on Twitter for the last several days, just hammering things. Uh, and he's saying that this lockdown is going to wipe out the other ninety-nine point eight. Of the country. Right, the one percent is going to make it. Don't no, worry about it. Not that. even the one percent. Just the top two tenths of what two tenths are going to make it. So, if you don't own anything except you know, except FRN, it matters not to you how people suffer, and should they you consider that a gain? You bring a lot of trouble to the town, and then you leave. 
That's part of your communistic game I detect a little communism I can see it in the things you do Communism, socialism, call it what you like There's very little difference in the two Is that Marty Robbins? Communism, socialism? Is that who that was? Hmm. Jason. Jason, he's running the board. Don't forget, this is a two-hour edition of the Patriot Radio News Hour. If you're riding down the road in Phoenix, grab your cell phone here and flip over to 1360khnc.com, and bang, just comes right up. Joe's done a great job with that. We don't know what's going to happen. I mean, you know, nobody does. Uh, Ultimately, though, a lot of people believe that we're heading into that they're going to screw the whole thing up. You know, if they do it right, they're going to create runaway inflation. Okay, if they do it right and flood the so, streets with FRN, so, if they so do it wrong, we're heading into a depression. That, that, those are our two choices. Those are our two choices. That's it. I'm pretty sure. So, runaway inflation if they do it right. The economic collapse won't come next year. It's coming this summer. Well, I, I'm just looking at people not paying rents, people not paying mortgages, and, and I just don't, you know, I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense, and and. Uh, it doesn't feel like they want to get the money out to the people, at least in my opinion, because I'm sitting there looking at Wall Street. What the hell is Wall Street doing? Oh, yeah, what are you doing? Well, it's nuts, isn't it? Well, they're counting because on you the know money. what? If Wall Street was doing what it should do, right, they, right? The money would be out there. They'd be panicking. The money would be out there. The panic stopped for bankers. They're like, yeah, let me see. We're looking at your application here, Mister J. Clint. You got a radio station now. We say we set you back. Did we really set you back, or you know, just just a little hiccup? <laughs> That's how they're looking at it. So, you know, let's hope they can hold this thing together. Because you know what happens for some reason, you know, that none of the public owns stock, and they're all panicked buying groceries and everything when Wall Street collapses and toilet paper. It didn't happen until Wall Street fell. Coronavirus was a huge issue. No. Super Bowls we had all-time highs when right. coronavirus was rocking China. Right. Wuhan shut down. Okay. Nobody cared. It was Super the middle Bowl. of February. We had all-time highs. Right. So, uh, we got the Phoenix Open, 500,000 people all piled together, and it was not an issue. It was not news issue until the Dow fell 1,000. Then the next day fell 1,400. Then the toilet paper started vanishing. Why? The Dow is the fearometer, total control. They can make people do anything they want, anything they want by hammering that one indice, which the industrials, it's not industrial. It represents a service economy. So I don't know. They're going to, you know, they've also figured out that they can stop the lines in the stores and the shortages by pumping the computer money through the plunge protection team. So, so you know, it's, it's not all bad, but eventually everything – you can't hide the inertia here of the decimation that's being done by this lockdown. And, uh, I mean, I can't imagine. And let's hope we don't have bread lines again and Does people wandering work. the this country. This whole thing, so. this, this whole small business thing, which, by the way, now they're saying they're going to add another $200 billion. At least that's the, the whisper number uh, on Thursday uh, to to the small business thing. These businesses have been shut for weeks. Yeah, and they, and they don't. They haven't even handed. They're just taking applications. Right. They haven't handed out a cent. Crazy. And then if you and then and then the thing is, is if you don't want to have to pay it back, you've actually got to spend it on the payroll. These pay, these the workers are already not there. I know. What are they? What are they thinking? So I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna see. I mean, the one thing you can't stop is time. So. We're going to do our best to get you through this. We appreciate you people turning in and uh, allowing us to broadcast. We're very grateful. We're uh, going to switch on over here. We'll be on 1360 KHNC for the next hour. And uh, it's a great day. So thanks for staying with us. 